for us to give our gifts to the bishop is not yet time.
and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit you made your only begotten Son High Priest of the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous design we are pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church for Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own but with the brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we are clean. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you
In a similar way, when Saba was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Jesus, my Lord, 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 my Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving that holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to your Son. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Aloysius, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Aloysius our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <laughs> Unitate Spiritu Sancti, Omnis Honor et Gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said it to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
that Mary sings a song to love me with my dearest King. Oh, we would bless the fair and praise thy good and Jesus Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There shall be a couple of speeches, first from the Diocese of Manfei, then from the President of the National Episcopal Conference, and we shall listen to a response from the new bishop. After that, we'll have the Magnificat, and we shall get to the presentation of official gifts and a few photographs. And after that, we shall leave for reception. Let's listen to the speeches. Mafe Dauces! Mafe Dauces! A speech presented by the Diocese of Mafe on the occasion of the Episcopal ordination of Most Reverend Dr. Aloysius Abangalo Fondong, Tech Residential Bishop of Mafe, on Thursday, 5th May 2022. Your Excellency Joseph Betty Asomo, Minister Delegate at the Presidency in Charge of Defense, Personal Representative of the Head of State. Your Excellency Julio Mora, the Apostolic Nuncio to Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. Your Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Andrew Fonya Kea, Archbishop of Bamenda, President of the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon and President of the Bamenda Episcopal Conference. Your Excellencies, Archbishops and Bishops of Cameroon, Members of Government, Honorable for George Tabetando, Vice President of the Senate, Honorable Members of Parliament, Senior Divisional Officer for Manu, Mayor of Manfe, Administrative, Traditional and Religious Authorities, Priests, Religious, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Almighty God, in His infinite love and mercy, has blessed the Diocese of Manfe yet with another Christian religious ceremony, embedded with grandeur and solemnity. It is with the love and peace of the Lord that you are all welcome to the Episcopal ordination of Most Reverend Dr. Aloysius Abangalo Fondong and his canonical possession of the Diocese of Manfe as Tech Residential Bishop. This is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. The Diocese of Manfe, erected on February 22, 1999, is geographically co terminus with civil administrative divisions of Manu and the BLM and Guti subdivision in Madunguba Division in the southwest region of Cameroon. It is bordered in the west by the Archdiocese of Calabar and Ogoja in Nigeria, in the north by the Archdiocese of Bamenda, and in the east and the south by the dioceses of Bafusam, Boya, and Kumba. People from various parts of Cameroon and foreigners live and work with the indigenous people in the diocese of Manfe as civil servants, business magnates, and peasant farmers. Most Reverend Dr. Francis Teke Lisenge first residential bishop, who worked from Wednesday, April 21st, 1999, until Saturday, January 25th, 2014, began with eight priests, six parishes, five religious congregations, two hospitals, and three health centers, with a Cali Christian population of 34,000. He worked very hard with the Presbyterium and other pastoral and health collaborators to lay a very solid foundation for the Diocese of Manfi, which led to the rapid growth in all areas of evangelization. Hence, by 2013, there were 28 parishes, 48 priests, six religious congregations, two hospitals, four health centers, and a Catholic Christian population of 82,000. He shepherded the Diocese properly let the Presbyterium to espouse love, peace, solidarity, 
and encourage the flock to aim at making the diocese something beautiful for God. He held a diocesan synod on the Christian family, laying a strong foundation and emphasis on the family as a domestic church and the primary cell of human society. The magnificent bishop's house, the diocesan secretariat, the St. Francis Xavier Pastoral Center, the attractive beautiful cathedral were built under his able stewardship. We, the Catholic Christians of the Diocese of Manfe, sincerely thank Most Reverend Dr. Francis Teke Lisenge, founding father of Manfe Diocese, for the many sacrifices and prayers he made for the Diocese of Manfe. Most Reverend Dr. Andrew Fonyan Keya, second residential bishop, worked from Saturday 25th January 2014 till today, Thursday, May 5th, 2022. Building on, expanding, and consolidating the foundation of the Diocese of Manfe. He was the bishop until, Mon until Monday, 30th, December 30th. 2019, when His Holiness Pope Francis appointed him Archbishop of Bamenda and Apostolic Administrator of Manfred. Most Reverend Dr. Andrew Foyer Keya, full of youthful energy, daunting determination, wisdom, and intrepid administrative act that sped up the growth of the Diocese of Manfred, ensuring that the spirit of one family permitted and united all areas of evangelization, especially by putting a five-year strategic development plan. The St. John the Paul Major Seminary Bajontai for the formation of priests was founded. And most of the infrastructure is already in place. The St. Francis Xavier Pastoral Center was expanded and modernized. The St. Joseph Cathedral Manfe was adorned with excellent pairs of durable, expensive wood, the Marian Shine and Boca sprang into existence. Extensive agricultural farms were set up, and parishes were encouraged to have theirs to ensure financial self-reliance. Bike riders were given helmets and jackets to enhance their security. The Lux Athena Memorial Garden was constructed as a befitting cemetery for priests and Christians. Some health centers were built and expanded to give optimum health care. Honor Familia Finance PLC was opened to ensure safe custody of people's money. Refugees and displaced persons were catered for. And a commercial center is under construction. Most Reverend Andrew Fonyankeya personally ensured that a retirement home was built for Bishop Lisenge, his immediate predecessor. He also mobilized the Diocese of Manfe and friends to celebrate the Golden Jubilee of Bishop Lisenge in 2016, culminating in a pilgrimage to Rome. The Catholic, population, the Catholic Christian population rose to 86,000 by 2016, but soon began reducing due to the current socio-political crisis. And by 2021, while the Catholic Christian population kept decreasing, there were 28 parishes, 90 priests, 12 religious congregations, 2 hospitals, 5 health centers. The, the entire houses of Manfe greatly appreciate and fervently thank most Reverend Dr. Andrew Foyankeya, Archbishop of Bamenda, for his outstanding stewardship in the Diocese of Manfe. May the Blessed Virgin Mary continue to intercede for him. May God guide him and bless and fructify his work in the Archdiocese of Bamenda. When Most Reverend Dr. Andrew Foyankeya was transferred to the Archdiocese of Bamenda, we wept and we sad, but we prayed for his successor. Like courageous orphans, we prayed in hope until February 22, 2022, when His Holiness, 
Pope Francis appointed Most Reverend Dr. Aloysius Abang Abangalo Fondong as third residential bishop of our beloved Diocese of Manfi. We were extremely happy and manifested this joy visibly when the announcement was made and when we actually welcomed him on Thursday, April 21st, 2022. And today, our joy is complete as we historically witness and experience the episcopal uh, ordination of Most Reverend Dr. Aloysius Abangalo Fondong and his canonical possession of the Diocese of Manfi. Let the highland of the Vialem vibrate. Let the grass field of Aquaya leap for joy. Let the plains of Manu echo in jubilation. Let the mountains of Kupe Manunguba revibrate. Resounding with, with irresistible alacrity. The Diocese of Manfe is a happy beneficiary of a curious divine coincidence. A canon lawyer goes, another canon lawyer comes. A canon lawyer is sent forth, another canon lawyer is welcome. The whole diocese in concert leaps for joy, singing thanksgiving to Almighty God. We thank God for giving us a shepherd after his own heart. We are abundantly blessed to have a shepherd who has had rich experience in the ministerial priesthood, who is intelligent and dynamic, who is spiritually matured, and who has trained some of the priests presently serving in the Diocese of Manfi. Most Reverend Dr. Aloysius Abangalo Fondong, Bishop of Manfi, we pray God to give you the wisdom of Solomon to shepherd your flock, the courage of David to carry out your pastoral duties in the present socio-political crisis. May God guide you. We thank the Kali Christians of the Diocese of Manfe. Appreciate and thank all members of the steering committee for their tireless work and sacrifices in preparing for the success of this historic event. We are exceedingly grateful for the state for providing us with maximum security. We immensely thank all the people who contributed spiritually, materially, and financially towards the success of this occasion. We heartily thank all the groups, associations, subcommittees, and all people of goodwill for their countless sacrifices for this Episcopal ordination. May God bless us all here today abundantly and lead all of our guests and all of us safely back home. Thank you for coming and participating in this joyous celebration. Long live the Diocese of Manfe. Long live the Ecclesiastical Province of Bamenda. Long live the Universal Church through George Ndung for the Diocese of Manfe. <laughs> We now listen to another speech from the President of the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon. His Excellency Joseph Betia Somo, Minister Delegate at the Presidency of the Republic, in charge of defense and personal representative of the head of state to this ordination ceremony. His Excellency Most Reverend Julio Murat, the Apostolic Nuncio to Cameroon. His Excellency Most Reverend Aloysius Abangalu Fondong, newly consecrated and installed Bishop of Manfe Diocese. The Excellencies, Archbishops and Bishops of Cameroon, their Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Members of Government here present, His Excellency the Governor of the Southwest Region, 
the SDO for my new division, Honorable Senators and Parliamentarians, Civil, Political, Traditional, Religious Authorities, Dear Priests, Religious, Christ lay Faithful of Manfred Diocese, Dear Brothers and Sisters, on behalf of the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon, I wish to say a big welcome to the newest member of the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon, His Excellency the Most Reverend Aloysius Abangalo Fondo. Your Lordship, it is with great joy that all the bishops of Cameroon welcome to the news of your appointment on the 22nd of February 2022 by His Holiness Pope Francis to the Sea of Mamfe, which had been vacant since the 30th of December 2019, following the appointment of its former pastor to the Sea of the Archdiocese of Bamenda. Testimony of this joy of the bishops is the massive turnout of the bishops of Cameroon with all the risk involved to pray with you and lay hands on you today to make you to be like them. The bishops of Cameroon are very happy that the Apostolic Nuncio to Cameroon did everything within his powers to come here and be with all the bishops of Cameroon in this ecclesiastical act. Your Excellency the Nuncio, we, are great, we greatly appreciate this fraternal and apostolic solidarity which we share with you and which we shall continue through you to walk hand in hand with the Holy See for the growth of the church in Cameroon. On a very special note, I wish on behalf of all the archbishops and bishops here present to thank the head of state of Cameroon, His Excellency Paul Bia, for giving such special attention to the Episcopal ordination of our brother bishop. The head of state did, did not only send a very high-ranking minister in the person of His Excellency Joseph Betia Somo, Minister Delegate at the Presidency of the Republic in Charge of Defense, as his personal representative, but also took all the measures to ensure the safe travel of all the bishops and the Apostolic Nuncio to Mamfe and back. The heavy deployment of the military and security forces of all ranks during this occasion shows the interest of the authorities to ensure the smoothness of this event. Mr. Personal Representative of the Head of State, kindly bring the gratitude of all the bishops of Cameroon to the Head of State for this concern. And to your, very, to your person, we are also very grateful for your presence here. We appreciate our gratitude to the civil, we express our gratitude to the civil, traditional, religious, and political authorities of Manju Division, Libya Lem Division, Nguti Subdivision, and Kupe Maninguba Division for all their contributions to the success of this event. We cannot forget to thank the Christians of Mamfe Diocese for the work they have done for this event and also for the warm welcome they gave to their bishop when he entered Mamfe for the first time on the 21st of April 2022. Since the crisis began in 2016, Archbishop Samuel Kleda, Bishop Abraham Kome, as past presidents of the National Episcopal Conference, have visited Mamfe Diocese to console the people of Mamfe. At the time, I welcomed them here as the Bishop of Mamfe. And now, I am also the president of the conference making my very first speech in this capacity in Mamfe Diocese. The Conference of Bishops uses this chance to congratulate the priests, religious, and lay faithful of the Diocese of Mamfe for their strong faith and witnessing, especially during this time of crisis. The people have faced a lot of suffering, but the church in Mamfe is still standing strong. We encourage you not to lose hope and know that your bishops all over Cameroon are praying that peace should return very soon to our troubled regions in Cameroon and especially to Mamfe Diocese. 
the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon, wishes Bishop Aloysius Fondon a very happy and fruitful Episcopal ministry in the Diocese of Manfe. God bless our new bishop, God bless the Diocese of Manfe, and God bless the church in Cameroon. Thank you for your kind attention. We now have a word of response from the new bishop. His Excellency, Mr. Joseph Betia Somo, Minister Delegate at the Presidency in Charge of Defense. His Excellency, Monsignor Julio Morat, the representative of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, to the Church in Cameroon. Your Excellencies, Archbishops and Bishops of Cameroon, all religious, civil, and traditional leaders, the clergy of the Diocese of Manfe, Members of Institute of Consecrated Life, Society of Apostolic Life in the Diocese of Manfi, Christ lay faithful of the Diocese of Manfi, my beloved brothers and sisters. We have all gathered here in the spirit of prayer and praise to Almighty God for what He has done for me. There are certain things, like the reception of Episcopal ordination in the Catholic Church, which can only happen once in the life of a person. These things usually provoke a variety of reactions and feelings which words can do scant justice to express or explain. This is precisely the state in which I find myself now. However, your presence here today urges me to express just one, feel, one of the feelings I have been experiencing since the day of the announcement of my appointment as Bishop of Manfi. That feeling is none other than that of gratitude. Gratitude best expresses my thoughts, my emotions, my desires, and above all, my wonder about the gift that I have just received. Foremost, I would like to express my special sentiments of gratitude to God, our Heavenly Father, who deigned to entrust me with the dignity of the Episcopate. When I heard the news of my appointment as Bishop of Manfe, my immediate reaction was fear, based on the recognition of my unworthiness for so great a responsibility among the people of God. And just like in David, I too couldn't help but say, Who am I, Lord, and what is my lineage for you to have led me as far as this? However, a few weeks ago, I found consolation in these words from His Eminence, Christian candidate to me of blessed memory, addressed to His Lordship, Bishop George Ko of the Diocese of Kumbu on September 8, 2006. He said, and I quote, George, there is no doubt that to be appointed bishop is a big honor to you and to a people. Have you been elected bishop because you have distinguished yourself among other priests as the most outstanding in priestly virtues? The cardinal goes on. We are not bishops because we are holier than other priests. We are bishops by the grace of God for reasons best known to him alone. My dear brothers and sisters, God's ways are not man's ways. And his thoughts are not man's thoughts. May his holy name be praised forever through his works. I would like to express profound gratitude to his holiness for Francis who appointed me to be the chief shepherd of the people of God in the Diocese of Manfi. I recognize with admiration his pastoral solicitude for the spread of the Catholic faith, not just at the level of the Universal Church, but also for the particular churches throughout the world. May the good Lord continue to bless him with the necessary wisdom to fulfill his awesome responsibility as a successor of St. Peter the Apostle and pastor of the Universal Church. My feelings of gratitude go to His Excellency, Monsignor Julio Morat, representative of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, to the Church in Cameroon. Fulfilling the responsibilities of a papal legate in a country like Cameroon, with great cultural diversities, can be daunting. It is in this light that I sincerely appreciate their spirit of faith, fortitude, high sense of duty, and practical wisdom in carrying out their mission in the Church in Cameroon. Your Excellency, I will rely so much on your fraternal counsel 
for the success of my Episcopal ministry. My dear brothers and sisters, having accepted my appointment as Bishop of the Diocese of Manfi, I have to admit that after the Almighty God and the Holy Church, the people to whom I owe the deepest depth of gratitude are my parents, without whom it would have been impossible for me to be here today. I am indeed grateful for the gift of life and faith that they imparted to me and my siblings, and for the many sacrifices they made out of their limited resources to provide for our education. It is said that as soon as he became bishop, Pope St. Pius X went to his mother, who was elderly and sick. Mine was sick yesterday. I'm happy that she's able to come here today. <laughs> he said to her, Mom, kiss the ring of your son who has become bishop. With devotion, his mom kissed the ring. Then she said to him, But now, you two kiss my ring. It was the ring of their wedding. And immediately she said, because if there wasn't this that is mine and your father's, they wouldn't have been yours either. My dear parents, truly indeed, without your marital consent, which your new chair ring eloquently manifests, it would not have been possible for me to wear this ring today. May the good Lord continue to bless the exemplary, faithful and fruitful marital love you have shared for 54 years now. I feel blessed and privileged to have you both present on this day, this important day of my life. I love you, my dear parents. I would like to express my gratitude to the President of the Republic of Cameroon, His Excellency Mr. Paul Bia, personally represented here by His Excellency Mr. Joseph Betty Asomo, Minister Delegate at the Presidency of the Republic in Charge of Defense. The importance of collaboration between the Church and the State in the life of any given nation can never be overemphasized. May this collaboration continue to grow from strength to strength. I wish now to express my deepest sentiments of gratitude to my senior brothers, the Archbishops and Bishops of Cameroon here present. My beloved brothers, by the mystery which we have just celebrated today, I am united with each of you in a new, profound and beautiful fraternity in the Episcopal Order of the Priesthood. Your massive presence here gives credence to this third consoling statement found in the directory for the pastoral ministry of bishops. It says, the bishop is never alone because through effective collegiality, which finds expression in effective collegiality, he is constantly united with his brethren in the episcopate and with the one chosen by the Lord to be the successor of Peter. End of quote. Thank you, my beloved brothers, for coming here. I sincerely wish to express my heartfelt gratitude to my predecessors in the Episcopacy of the Diocese of Manfi. His Lordship, Francis Tekeli Singer, first residential bishop of the Diocese of Manfi, and His Grace, Andrew Fanyake, second residential bishop of the Diocese of Manfi. The brilliance of the legacies of your pastoral solicitudes for the Diocese of Manfi can be seen even by the visually impaired. No one in his right senses can claim to inherit such legacies without trepidation. However, when I consider the fact that the story of my life as a Catholic Christian and my vocation to the Catholic priesthood cannot be told without mention of the contributions of my predecessors, I think my fears and doubts regarding my presence in the divine plan for the Episcopacy of Manfred can be conveniently resolved. To begin with, I was baptized by the then Reverend Father Francis Teke de Singer on 1st of July 1973. In September 1998, I began my journey to the Catholic priesthood in the St. Thomas Aquinas Major Seminary, Bambi. <laughs> Father Francis Teke de Singer was so happy to see me in the seminary, and by God's design, he was appointed my spiritual director. Later on, on June 29, 2005, I had the privilege of being ordained deacon by Bishop Francis Tekeli Singer in the St. Joseph Metropolitan Cathedral in Mangon Bamenda. I remember him saying to me, My son, I am happy that I ordained you deacon. I wish 
it would have been him to ordain me priest. But God decided otherwise, allowing his classmate of blessed memory, his eminence Christian Cardinal Tumi, to do so. My decision to become a Catholic priest goes back to 1992, when I first visited the den for the Andrew Care, working as parochial vicar in St. John Bosco Parish, Bonge of the Den Diocese of Boya. I spent a few weeks with him and the other priests in the presbytery. I was overwhelmed by the spirit of love and dedication to ministry exhibited by these priests. I still remember how I went to sleep late most of the time, contemplating the possibility of becoming one of them. That became a reality on the 20th of April 2006, thanks to the invaluable assistance I received from Father Andrew Kerr throughout my priestly formation. What is more, in September 2014, I was appointed lecturer of canon law in the St. Thomas Aquinas Major Seminary Bamboo. I replaced Father Andrew Kerr, who had been appointed second residential bishop of the Diocese of Mamfe. I remain indebted to you, Your Grace, for your lecture notes and wise counsels, which greatly facilitated my work as formator in the major seminary. Your Grace, today, I have had the singular privilege of being the first priest to have you as principal consecrator for Episcopal ordination. Your Episcopal lineage will always be important to me, since it is through your Episcopal ministry that I too have been joined to the Apostolic Succession. Today, Your Grace, I have taken canonical possession of the Episcopal See of the Diocese of Manfi, and by this act, I have become the third residential bishop of the same diocese succeeding you as my immediate predecessor. My dear brothers and sisters, what we have witnessed today is beyond the grasp of mere human reasoning. No one can adequately understand God's ways without the light of faith. St. Thomas Aquinas understood this very well when he said, to the one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To the one without faith, no explanation is possible. As I see it, the only way to protect the fascinating legacies of my predecessors is the way of continuity. A healthy continuity that leaves the possibility to adapt to legitimate new demands. To you, my beloved priests of the Diocese of Mamfe, members of Institutes of Consecrated Life and Sites of Apostolic Life in the Diocese of Mamfe, and to Christ lay faithful of the Diocese of Mamfe, God, our Heavenly Father, has listened to your supplications and has given you a pastor. Describing the mission of a bishop in a diocese, the directory for the pastoral mission of bishop says, as vicar of the great shepherd of the sheep, the bishop manifests through his life and episcopal ministry the fatherhood of God. He reveals the goodness, the loving care, the mercy, the gentleness, and the authority of Christ who came to give his life and to gather all people into one family reconciling them in the love of the Father." End of quote. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in this beloved diocese, I have no other mission in Manfe except to continue the great challenge of making Manfe diocese a truly one family, which will always remain something beautiful for God. There is no doubt about it. No family can be something beautiful for God if it is not truly united, truly one. Manfe Diocese, one family. Manfe Diocese, one family. Manfe Diocese, one family. On his appointment as Metropolitan Archbishop of the Kisimu Diocese in Kenya, Archbishop Maurice Mosia Makumba said, I will depend on the love and faith of the priests, the religious, the laity of the diocese, to help me find my bearing. For the rest, I submit myself in the hands of Christ the Good Shepherd to learn from Him and be guided by Him." End of quote. My dear brother priests, my dear Christians of the Diocese of Manfi, I will depend on your love and faith for a fruitful Episcopal ministry in this local church. Coincidentally, the pectoral cross which I have chosen to wear as bishop is the one dedicated to the Good Shepherd. I hope and pray that your love and faith will help me to be the Good Shepherd 
you have asked God for for more than two years now. The one thing I can assure you now is this. I'm coming to Manfe with an open heart and an open mind. Ready to work with every one of you. So that together, and by living the truth in love, we may continue to anchor the dice of Manfe in Christ Jesus, who is the head of the church. What is more, my dear friends, I stand before you today as a servant of the Lord with the readiness to do His will for you. I am here, not only as a father and head of the particular church in Manfe, but also, and more importantly, as a brother in Christ and a member of the Christian faithful of this beautiful portion of the Lord's vineyard. In this light, my dear friends, I sincerely plead that you see in me more a brother than a bishop, since no one can be a bishop who is not first a brother. The former is a title linked to an ecclesiastical office, but the latter is the condition that flows from the grace of baptism which we all share. The veracity of this fact urges me to mention these thought-provoking words addressed by St. Augustine to his flock on the anniversary of his Episcopal ordination. He said, Where I am terrified by what I am for you, I am given comfort by what I am with you. For you, I am a bishop. With you, after all, I am a Christian. The first is the name of an office undertaken. The second, a name of a grace. In the first, there is danger. And in the second, there is salvation. I am particularly indebted to the members of the organizing committee and to everyone who has made a sacrifice to ensure the success of my Episcopal ordination and ministry. <coughs> Special sentiments of gratitude go to Mr. Victor Mengot, Chairman of the Steering Committee, Monsignor Julius Agotoko, General Coordinator, Mr. Paul Tasson, Chairman of the Finance Committee, Mr. John Sinokie, Chairman of the Material Organization, the members of my immediate family, the Manu, Guti, and the BLM communities, those at home and abroad. The fear of forgetting to mention someone's name compels me now to speak in general terms. My beloved brothers and sisters, I cannot find words to adequately express the sentiments of my heart regarding what I have experienced today from each of you. Certainly, this celebration, this day is not about me. It is about us, about our faith, about our love for Jesus Christ and His Church, and about our collective effort and disposition to continue the work of evangelization that started in this beautiful diocese in 1999. I have no doubts that the good Lord, who knows the intentions of our hearts better than we do ourselves, will richly bless each of you for what you have done to give this occasion the dignity it deserves and a resounding success. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all with whom I have had the privilege to share the joys and sorrows of this earthly life in different capacities, such as my friends classmates, schoolmates, colleagues, etc. One of you, on hearing the news of my appointment as Bishop of Manfe, said to me, and I quote, Father, even though I glad say you don't be Bishop, my heart is worry me small. Because eh, God don't give me Bishop, but he don't take with friend go. I think there may be an element of truth about what this friend said. But I want to say to each of you, I want each of you to know that there is no end to true friendship and there will be no end to our friendship now that I have become bishop. Permit me to use this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of Father Henrik Tapie, who came from Rome to be part of this celebration. Padre. He is both rector of the International Seminary run by the Regionalists of Christ and the one in charge of the house where I stayed throughout my stay in, in Rome. Dear Father, the one family that is of Manfe says, welcome. Do have a wonderful time with us. Questa è la tua Dioges. Questa è la tua casa. Capito bene? As we all know, my brothers and sisters, I have been appointed Bishop of Manfe during a very difficult moment in the history of Cameroon. 
Many would have loved to be part of this celebration. But because of the fear of the unknown, they prefer to stay back. There is no doubt that the territory of the Diocese of Mamfe has experienced the worst casualties in what has come to be known as the Anglophone crisis. A cross section of the diocese is shut down, and many of our Christians and our brothers and sisters constitute a greater part of the internally displaced persons and those seeking refuge, re those seeking refuge outside the country. Since February 22nd, when I was appointed bishop, many people have expressed their concerns to me about my coming to Manfe, especially during this time. I decided not to react to these concerns, but I will do so now. On the 11th of April 2019, during a two-day retreat, Pope Francis kissed the feet of South Sudan's previously warring leaders and said to them, and I quote, I am asking you as a brother to stay in peace. I am asking you with my heart, let us go forward. End of quote. Following the example of Pope Francis, and believing strongly that the God we all worship is the God who makes what seems impossible to be possible, I say to everyone here present, and those of you following this celebration through the different means of social communication, I come to Manfe in peace. And I'm ready to support in any way possible the initiative taken so far to put an end to this war. <laughs> My dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, war is never a solution to any problem. In fact, war always leaves a people worse than it made them. I know it is not possible for me to kiss the feet of those who have kept the steam of this war. However, as your brother, I stand here today and I beg each of you from my heart, please, let's do whatever it takes to put an end to this war. Let us look at the mystery of our brothers and sisters and give peace a chance. On my coat of arms, there is a blue monogram with 12 stars. This monogram represents Our Lady of Fatima and Queen of the Rosary, under whose protection I dedicated my priestly ministry and now my episcopal ministry. Considering the fact that the Blessed Virgin Mary is the principal patroness of Cameroon, I strongly believe that the wisdom to resolve this statement is found in true devotion to Our Lady of Fatima, who clearly says, instructed the three children, say the rosary every day to bring peace to the world and the end of the war. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, I invite all of you to rise. Please stand. Everybody stand. And welcome Our Lady of Fatima, in whose heart lies the secret to the peace we so much desire for the Diocese of Manfe in particular and in Cameroon in general. Thank you for your kind attention.
Our Lady Queen of Peace. Our Lady Queen of Peace. Pray for us. 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 Now we have the official presentation of gifts, and it is going to be in this order. The CMA National, CWA National, Bamenda Archdiocese, Boya Diocese, and Mamfe Diocese. That is the organizing committee. Just this. And after that, we'll have the final blessing. And then, when the bishop returns, the other presentation of gifts is going to take place. Please come up immediately behind the Archdiocese of Bamenda. And immediately after Boya, we will call on the organizing committee for this convention to come forward to the designers. I will close this page.
the laity and the priests have offered the sum of 5 million francs. Your Excellency Betty Asomo Joseph, Minister Delegate of the Presidency of the Republic in charge of defense, personal representative of the head of state. Your Excellency Ulio Mora, Apostolic Nuncio to Cameroon and Ecuador, Guinea. Your Grace Andrew Fonyankia, Archbishop Bamenda, President of the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon, and President of the Bamenda Provincial Episcopal Conference, BAPE. Your Grace is Bish Archbishop, your Lord she's Bishop, our own Lordship, Most Reverend Dr. Alicious Abangalo Fondom. Bishop of Manfe, Your Excellency, members of government and those ranking as such, the Governor of the Southwest Region, the Senior Division Officer for Manu, Honorable Members of Parliament, the Division Officer for Manfe, the Mayor of Manfe, the Parliament Chief of Manfe, all other judiciary, civil, traditional, and military authorities here present, priests and religious, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I stand here in my humble capacity as a member of Christ lay faithful of the one family Manfe Diocese, who was called upon on March 24, 2022, by His Grace Andrew Kia, the Archbishop of Bamenda, then Apostolic Administrator of the Manfred Diocese to accompany the diocese in the organization of the Episcopal ordination of the new Bishop of Manfred. In as much as judging from the success we all observe, we would have loved to take credit for the success of this event, but we can't because this was much a team effort. The effort of an organizing committee comprising a steering committee and sectorial subcommittees made of dynamic and able men and women, priests, religious, and Christ lay faithful, all working under the visionary leadership of Archbishop Nkia. Yes, he will love me to take the title chair of the organizing committee. No, he was my chair. He is still my chair. The role bequeathed me was that of coordinating the work of the subcommittees. I had to play the role of general coordinator. As seated by two able sons of the diocese, lay faithful like myself, and whom I would like to call upon to join me on the roadstroom. I crave your indulgence to call Mr. It's not an error. Mr. Tyson Paul Njuka, Minister Delegate at the Ministry of Economy, Plan and Regional Development, who is the Vice Coordinator in Charge of Finance and Logistics. And he represents Lobia Lem Dineri. Mr. Okie Johnson Do. Director General of the Hydrocarbons Price Stabilization Fund, better known by its French acronym CSPH. Mr. Okia Johnson, who is the Vice Coordinator in Charge of Material Organization, representing the Nguti Dinary, is also the President of the Association of Men of Honor, the Catholic Men's Association. Saint Joseph! Saint Joseph! Man of honor, pray for us. Saint Joseph, man of honor, pray for us. It is worth mentioning here that within the coordination, I represent the three dineries of Manu Division, which are Aquire, Eumajok, and Mamfi. 
Of course, we are not forgetting our rapporteurs, the people who did all the groundwork in the presence of Mr. Tanju Charles, wherever he is, can just stand up, Mr. Echu Daniel Ojong, and Mr. J. Nicholas. And of course, worth mentioning are our focal points, the men and women that were identified in our various cities, in Yawande, Douala, Boya, Limbe, Kumba, Bamenda, the USA and Canada, Europe and Germany, they all did a marvelous job. That is why we have the success of registering here today. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the mission of the coordination was to sensitize, mobilize, and galvanize the sons and daughters of Lobby Island Division, Manu Division, and Guti Subdivision, and their friends at home and in the diaspora for them to adhere to this initiative and participate physically, materially, financially and otherwise towards the successful organization of this ceremony and the acquisition of a, bef a befitting gift for our bishop. A befitting gift in the form of an appropriate car to enable the bishop shepherd of the Man Diocese undertake his pastoral duties of evangelization and the promotion of social peace and living together within the Manfi Diocese and beyond. After four grueling weeks, we have been able to cajole our brothers and sisters and our friends of the Catholic Church, of other Christian denominations, as well as some Muslim faithful, to accompany us on this journey. We are pleased to report here that your response to our fundraising appeals towards the financing of the above two twin objectives has been overwhelming. We want to thank and congratulate the laity, the priests and religious locally within the diocese for their sustained efforts and multifaceted sacrifices in kind, in labor, in cash, and who toil night and day to make this ceremony beautiful. At this juncture, it is our distinguished honor and singular privilege to announce to this August Assembly that a group of friends, they call themselves Special Friends of the Diocese, Special Friends of Manfred Diocese and the Bishop, have through their selfless donations, in addition to contributing towards the financing of this organization itself, through their selfless donations have made it possible for the purchase of a brand new four-wheel drive Toyota Prado VX. If I may add, full option, leather interior, alloy wheels and what have you. That is what our bishop deserves. This is as a special gift to his Lordship Aloysius Abangalu Fondong, the third residential bishop of Manfred Diocese, and which we will symbolically hand to him through this list of donors who made this possible. Unfortunately, we are all aware that the complex situation in which we live, imposed on us by COVID-19, has made it impossible for car dealers, particularly those who sell new cars, to import them and stock them in Cameroon. Particularly, Toyota is sold by an importer who lives amongst us in Yaoundé and Douala. But he has not been able to import and stock them because there's no market. So he imports them on demand. Bishop Abangolo's car has been ordered and it will be delivered to him fully as it has been promised. May I once more express our heartfelt appreciation to the sons and daughters of Lobby Alem Division, Manuel Division, and Guti Subdivision, and their friends, and their friends for their largesse in making the financial resources available to enable us achieve these twin objectives. We want to thank you all for your sacrifices, 
And may the seed that you've sown in the Lord's vineyard multiply a million fold. And may the Almighty God bless you abundantly and take you home safely. Thank you for your kind attention. And the rest of the archbishops and bishops here present. The new bishop. Bow your heads for the blessing. O oh God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, and thou with the spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that from the flourishing of your holy flock may come eternal joys for his shepherds. Amen. Amen. As in your majestic power you are Lord the number of our days and the measure of our years, look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your peace. Amen. Amen. Give a happy outcome to the task that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you have raised to the rank of bishop. Make me pleasing to you in the fulfillment of my duties, and so guide the hearts of people and pastors, that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd, nor the care of the shepherd be lagging for the flock. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Chosen one, you are a shepherd of God's soul. Me a shepherd, me a shepherd, after his own call. Me a shepherd, me a shepherd, after his own Be 
afraid of them. Go now, go now, and preach to my people. Even if you have to die. Go now, go now, and preach to my people. Even if you have to die. Go now, go now, and preach to my people. I come to Manfe in peace. I'm an apostle of peace. And I said I'm going to support all the peace initiatives taken so far to put an end to this statement, to this war. And I said war is never a solution to the problem. So all the initiatives that I'm taking, I will also try to support those initiatives to make sure that peace reigns in Manfe and in Cameroon in general. My role has been that of facilitator, accompanying the diocese and trying to make sure things work well. So I had the coordinator's role to coordinate all the subcommittees to make sure you saw the success that you saw here. Above all, to sensitize, mobilize and galvanize Christ lay faithful of malnutrition, lobby island division and Buddhist subdivision so that they can all adhere to this uh, worthy initiative and come on board physically, financially and otherwise. Which they did, because without these Christians coming on board, we would not have been able to put the show we put out today. Moreover, a group of them called uh, Special Friends of Manfred Diocese and Special Friends of the New Bishop decided to come together and donate money, funds to buy a new car for the New Bishop. So as you heard me announce, that group of special friends, for the moment there are about 80 of them, many more are coming on board, have raised sufficient funds to buy a new, brand new Prado. You know what a Prado, a four-wheel drive is, a VX, because they are in various grades. VX is the top of the line. That's what it has been paid for, ordered and paid for. We are only waiting for its delivery. We want to help the bishop facilitate his pastoral work, his evangelization. Manu, Lebelem have areas where the church has not yet gotten to. We want him to be able to go to those places. We want him to be able to lead his flock like his predecessor did. Go now, go now, and preach to my people. Tell them all I command you. Go now, go now, and preach to my people. Do not be afraid of them. Go now. Go now, go now